games new to me. Please like and subscribe. Hey guys, Rob here for Games New To Me, welcome back. So let's talk about virtual reality, or VR for short. I've recently posted a confession that I'm a primarily a console gamer, though having the PC horsepower to run just about anything. Now in recent videos I've discussed the Oculus, and I've discussed the HTC Vive, and I've even discussed the PlayStation VR. But which one, and I urge caution here, am I leaning towards buying the most? Let me first give you my criteria that I'm looking for in VR. Number 1. I don't want to spend nearly $1000 for an unproven, though exciting technology such as virtual reality. What I mean by unproven is whether or not it's something that will catch on with gamers, and the public at large. Or will it go the way of the 3D TV that was going to revolutionize our viewing habits until the public completely rebuked it? Number 2. I want ease of use. I'm capable of setting up anything and everything under the sun. I've worked in technology most of my life and I'm unfazed by anything that can be thrown at me. Having said that, I'm not looking to turn what is supposed to be a fun activity, gaming, into something that resembles a job, to set up, run and maintain. Number 3. Probably most importantly, I want a really good experience with VR. I've never tried any of it. I've been hearing the promise of VR for decades now, so I'm hyped to finally try it in the comfort of my own home. I want to be immersed in it. I want to feel like I'm part of the virtual world being presented to me, and this is very important aspect when considering VR and which virtual reality system I want to purchase. Number 4. I don't want to be dealing with motion sickness or any of the reported dizziness or other physical side effects that seem to be an issue with virtual reality in its present incarnation. Whichever system doesn't make me feel ill is going to be the one I'm most likely going to buy. Let's face it, you can't enjoy a VR experience if you're vomiting or suffering a VR-induced migraine. This brings us to the VR system I'm right now most likely to buy, and at the moment I'm leaning towards the Sony PlayStation VR, and a review by TheGuardian.com is definitely nudging me even closer in that direction. Let me tell you what The Guardian had to say, and I'll post a link to the whole article in the description below. Quote, Slip on the headset. After several hours of play, it remains physically comfortable, robust, and secure. The important part of VR, though, is the virtual experience, and here PlayStation VR delivers almost flawlessly. There have been reported issues with stark, bright light, but in the medium-sized, mostly lit room, sitting or standing around 2 meters from the PlayStation camera, there were no problems." Unquote. The Guardian says that the video resolution of the PlayStation VR isn't on par with the Vive or the Oculus, but they go on to say that the compromising of video quality, which is set at 1080p, allows the PlayStation VR to provide a higher game frame rate, which provides a quote, smoother visual experience even when the game throws a lot of activity at you. This is likely the reason why motion sickness is not a problem with the Sony PlayStation VR. And you know, that's music to my ears. As I want to play, I don't want to feel sick, or have to take breaks every 5 minutes to prevent VR-induced nausea or headaches. If anything is going to completely pull you out of the full immersion experience, it's feeling sick or getting a headache. The Guardian goes on to say, quote, Sony seems to have licked the motion sickness issue, even over many hours of play, in sessions up to 45 minutes long. PlayStation VR appears to offer one of the most pleasant virtual reality experiences yet available. The Guardian essentially sums up everything I need to know when they say that, quote, presence is definitely accomplished in the Sony PlayStation VR, and that it's easy to forget that a virtual table is not actually real and attempting to set something down on it results in laughter from anyone who is watching you, as well as you yourself feeling very silly when you realize you just tried to set the controller down on that non-existent table. I'm not a Sony fanboy, I'm a video game fanboy. It's always been about the games. And the platform comes second, even if I do admit to being primarily a console gamer. Which is something I explained in a recent video that, like I said, I'll have linked down below. Have I made up my mind which VR system I'm going to buy? No. But I'm definitely leaning towards Sony. So I want to know from you guys which VR system is most appealing to you. Is price an issue? Or is the highest video fidelity what drives you? Do you feel that sacrificing a bit of that video fidelity for a better experience, if the Guardian's review is to be believed, is more important? Let me know in the comment section below and let's talk about it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys watching and enjoying my videos. It's still mind-blowing to me that at the time of this video, the channel is teetering on almost 600 subscribers. 
Speaking of which, to my subscribers, you guys rock. Please give me some feedback and let me know what you would like to see on this channel. This is not a pulpit for me to preach from. This is a discussion I'd like to have and a format in which I can hopefully entertain and inform. If you just found this video or channel, won't you please click that subscribe button? You'll have my gratitude, you'll help make a fantastic community even better, and you'll have the benefit of always being notified whenever a new video goes up on the channel. This is Rob for Games New To Me saying thank you, and I'm pumped for VR. Until next time, be good to each other, and I'll catch you next time. Take care, bye bye